Hello. Um, we are so excited to share our plans with you. Um, we'd like to first thank Exhibit Columbus team uh, and Mimi and Iker for inviting us and for all of their support in the process. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm Ursula Kripa. And I'm Stephen Miller. And we're faculty at Texas Tech College of Architecture in El Paso, and we co-direct uh, POST, which is a research center at the Texas Tech um, College of Architecture. In our work, we are interested in drawing and mapping the unseen, the invisible logics of the contemporary city, and we're interested in using that information to design public objects that act as the interface between people and systems. In Columbus, we're particularly interested in exploring the legacy of the airspace that shapes the region and the city. Columbus is uniquely positioned in, in regional airspace. Indiana's airspace is defined by a series of major uh, air traffic corridors radiating from major metropolitan centers. In this mapping of commercial and military flight path uh, intensities in Indiana, you can see Columbus bounded by their convergence, located within an island of relatively unoccupied airspace. The project considers the overlapping jurisdictional boundaries of military and civilian airspace in and around Columbus, a shared atmospheric territory that shapes and connects cities in the region and beyond. Columbus is unique for its position between two military training corridors as well, where low altitude training exercises arrive and depart from military airfields to the west and to the southeast. The military airspace surrounding Camp Atterbury to the west of Columbus and the Muscatatuck Urban Training Center to the southeast edge Columbus and intersect within, with civilian airspace nearby. And so the city of Columbus has long been shaped by these aerial activities and adjacent military sites. Gliders and cargo planes were a common sight in the skies around the city. A former Air Force base serves as the municipal airport facility. Flight patterns into and out of nearby airfields have impacted Columbus's architectural heritage by affecting maximum building height allowances. And uh, this image is courtesy of Enrique Ramirez. The project seeks to engage the site's connections to the militarized airspace around it. At the nearby Muscatatuck Urban Training Center complex, shown here in the second image, a repurposed urban area is now used for airborne military training exercises. It's here that the Indiana National Guard and other agencies practice disaster response scenarios, civilian rescue, and urban military operations. Here, trainees are taught that obtaining real-time aerial images and video feeds of an urban environment is essential to a wide array of urban operations. They occupy the city differently through augmented vision and unmanned vehicles. Here we've drawn the various built forms which participate in aerial detection, knowingly and unknowingly. On the top left, you can see Columbus with nearby municipal airport. And on the right, the Indiana Air Range Complex centers on the Muscatatuck training environment, including areas for manned and unmanned aerial training. Downtown Columbus is shaped in part by the glide path restrictions of the nearby airport on the bottom left, and in the simulated training center, several landing zones and multi-story buildings provide training environments where new ways of visioning the city are tested and refined. At the same time, recent developments in infrared imaging and other remote sensing technologies have transformed the capacity of urban and military planners to image and to imagine the city from the aerial perspective moving far beyond the wavelengths of the visible spectrum captured in aerial and satellite photography, these developments have transformed the city into a multi-spectral environment where previously unseen phenomena are rendered visible. With applications across agriculture, military planning, and urban planning, infrared imagery gathered from drones and satellites can detect sub-perceptual thermal signatures of bodies and landscapes. Handheld technologies are rapidly becoming accessible, affordable, portable, and easy to use, changing the way in which we and others can see the city. The city is no longer only a collection of visible artifacts, but a collection of signatures, identifiable patterns of temperature, movement, and radiation. Because these new capabilities are so widespread, security companies and military contractors like Saab are developing signature management strategies using advanced textiles that block thermal, infrared, and vision detection. 
We're interested in the spaces that these manipulated signatures and fragmenting materials can create and how they might be used to promote new publics and new public spaces in the multi-spectral city. While multi-spectral imaging is, is quite sophisticated, the aerial view continues to operate with the standard geometry of the camera, the vision cone. So this is where our, this is where our ground for intervention lies. What if we could disrupt the clarity of the vision cone? We're exploring a disruption both in direction and signature by introducing obstacles in its way. We've been exploring various angles and ways to fabricate the container of the vision cone, inspired by windsocks and binoculars, which are objects that indirectly or directly help extend vision over territories. The project references these ubiquitous pieces of infrastructure that are scattered around us. We're working with a combination of ready-mades and fabricated components that inhabit and deconstruct the continuity of the vision cone in order to camouflage images against an aerial vision. Using infrared reflective material and perforated plates, a coherent thermal image of a person, let's say, becomes fragmented and camouflaged, altering the otherwise recognizable signature into a collection of patterns. By stacking the conical geometry, a natural arch is formed, which allows for occupation, as you see here in this physical model. And as more units aggregate, an interesting density accumulates that's able to redirect vision. By dematerializing the module into a series of bundled frames, we find opportunities where we can insert flat material to create a series of alterations and shadow effects. The ready-made cage is advantageous in its lightness and its flexibility allows for on-site adjustments. The flat fabricated materials inserted into four layers with each layer's voids compounding the abstraction produced by its predecessor as you see here in this, the orange arrows in the section. Depending on the angle of vision and the visitor's location, each layer may be able to produce varying degrees of abstraction. These are the steps in the computation that we've been calculating in order to better understand the layering system and the digital fabrication process. Simplifying the smooth cone into a hexagonal form, we can actually calculate variations in packing combinations, nesting these volumes uh, to create the three-dimensional construction, and we can plan for installation tolerances. The arched form is then layered and computed as a collection of flat circular sheet material that blocks vision uniformly. Here, we are able to predict overlaps and redundancies in anticipation of fabrication. The third step deconstructs the circular sheets by subtracting material. Building on the logics of multispectral camouflage, the cones suspend an array of infrared reflective material, fragmenting the legibility of thermal activity from the aerial perspective while activating the site with multispectral shadow. We're doing this by calculating a gradient of apertures along the surface of the circular sheets, aiding in the construction of an additional image on the ground through shadow that mirrors the pavilion, further conflating the distinction between material and immaterial signatures. Our site is the side at the Crump Theater. Part of our thinking has been to understand the site by reinterpreting elements like the canopy and the portal windows in order to make our own street wall. Depending on how the pavilion is oriented on site, whether with its main canopy directed towards the aerial view or towards the street, it becomes a kind of backdrop for urban gatherings. Here is an elevation seen from the street on the left side of this image and from within the site on the right. The modules of the pavilion orient to multiple imagined aerial vantage points while directing cones of vision into and out of the pavilion at street level. We are currently exploring ways in which spectral engages, um, spectral meaning the pavilion, um, engages with the site. Depending on the fabrication of material constraints, spectral may be scaled up and be entirely fabricated, like this image on the right, or it can be partially constructed with ready-mades and then the assembly repeated in a collection of spherical spaces like the image in the center. We hope Spectral will be a public interface that mediates the public relationship with aerial infrared imaging while offering a site for thermal activity. Thank you.